So the idea of the solar refrigerator came from a discussion I had with a group at the Impala Clinic, um, which is a community-based clinic in Kenya that focuses on doing community medicine vaccinations for people in Laikipia district, a place where there really isn't much. Uh, and if you could put this into context, it's, it's a place that's about the size of Wales, where kids would not get vaccinated unless they have these camels that take vaccines to very remote places that you couldn't access by Land Rover. The clinic is one of hope. It's, it's a clinic that provides services to about 312,000 people. In the absence of that clinic, the kids would not be vaccinated and basically access to community-based medicine would be absent. Right now, there are daily vaccine losses during the missions. So once they open up the vaccines, they have an ice pack and they lose the rest of the materials unless they're able to maintain the temperatures. So consequently, we're talking about a poor country with limited resources where there are these daily losses of vaccines in the absence of solar powered cooling. So my design goals were fairly simple. So these are seven day missions in which the community medical people go out, first on Land Rover and then on camels with these uh, camel groups. And I wanted to have a system where the energy that you could store in the batteries and the energy that you could replenish through daily exposure to the sun would guarantee that the refrigerators would always have power. When we started the project, we thought about various concepts. Ultimately, we came up with a very simple idea of just an inclined structure that allows you to orient the solar panels with respect to the sun and hence optimize the solar collection. Now we're in the process of making that in bamboo, which we think will be the optimum in terms of weight, aesthetics, and the ability of the local people to maintain this. A key component of this though was testing them out at the Bronx Zoo. Working with camels actually presents interesting challenges. Um, there was a story I heard of the head of the group at the Bronx Zoo, I guess one day upset one of the camels and the camel decided to pick him up by his head. <laughs> so this kind of thing means you've got to be careful, you've got to recognize that these animals have real feelings and you have to design systems that integrate with them. You know, the camel has got a funny shape, it's got a torso, you have to figure out how to fit around that, it's got a hump, and although we thought we had measured the hump, we found out that different camels have different hump sizes, you have to integrate along different torsos. And so the real ingenuity actually happened once we put the design concept into contact with the camels at the Bronx Zoo. So our goal really, beyond the implementation in one uh, model for Impala, would really be to diffuse these across, not just based on aid, but with an approach that empowers the local people in Africa, in the Middle East, in places where people are not necessarily able to afford healthcare, to use the production of these as a way of sustaining the livelihood of people in those communities. You know, I think our role in universities such as Princeton is to embrace the grand challenges of our time. We, I think, should be leaders in this rather than just following the whims of projects that don't make an impact in the world.